All right, what's up, everybody? Today is Friday, Friday, January 24th, 2020, and I'm excited to talk with you all today. This is our normal uh, live weekly training that I do almost every single Friday at this time for CWC members. I took the liberty to post to a couple of the groups that we're in the link today as well for you to join and see what's going on. Maybe, you know, we can help you get a little bit better today. So if you don't know who I am, you know, I'm Joseph Puckett with Craig Wiggins Agencies. Been with Allstate now for about 11 years, started an agency 11 years ago, joined Craig Wiggins Agencies nine years ago, and just won't let go of his coattails. I hold those coattails and don't let go. Here we have Beth Lambrecht and do a little introduction. Um, I've been with the. Oh, That's okay. I'll, I'll mute them. I'm going to the to eliminate distractions. Feel free to send chats, or if you're volunteering to role play or something or want to chime in, that's fine. You can unmute yourself and start chiming in. We'll go ahead and give a little intro. Uh, well, my, my name is Beth Lambrecht. Um, I've been with the Wiggins Agency for going on uh, seven years. Um, I originally, uh, when I came in to work for the agency, I had no insurance experience um, and started out just working uh, cold purchase leads uh, for almost two years. Um, and I wrote anywhere between 55 and 75 items based on that level of production. And uh, in April of 2015, that was my first month that I wrote 100 items. Uh, but coming on to work with the Wiggins Agency, I was taught the talk process, um, how to overcome objections, uh, the activity expectations, and things like that. So um, I love what I do, and um, yeah. Awesome. Well, I was just looking at the sales log before I was going to start with the training, and I popped in. I was like, hey, you want to do the training with me today? Because, and I've got these numbers here. I'm, gonna I'm actually going to show you some numbers. You know, <clears throat> but before I get to the numbers, Mindset. Mindset is such a powerful thing. I had an agency owner email me yesterday, uh, you know, reach out and say, hey, my team member's struggling. You know, what can I do for my team member that's struggling? I said, okay, send me their activity. And the activity over the past month was averaging like 25 calls a day. 25 calls a day. It's no wonder that team member was struggling. So I challenged her to focus on the activity way more than the results. Of course, they're struggling if they're only making two to three calls an hour, right? So mindset is important. And I'm just going to ask Beth right now. She doesn't even know some of these numbers. Do you know what you're trending right now? 145. 151. So close. But do you even know? Do you even know how many calls you average a day, like this month? Um, anywhere between 150 to 200. Okay, 150 okay. to 200. Are you sure about that? Yes. Are you positive? Okay, maybe not so much now. <laughs> no, you are. You're right. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys her numbers here in just a second, but I want to start at a really high level, and then we're gonna talk about a little bit more in depth things, and I want to get to your questions and things that you guys want to work on today too, before I kick her out of here and get her back to work. But your mindset, what what level? of mental toughness do you have to have to bang out those number of calls and to be consistent day in and day out and again i'm going to show y'all her real uh talk time numbers call numbers quote numbers um here in just a minute she didn't even know i, I, I asked permission right before we started i was like do you mind if i show people your numbers but talk about your mindset and what it takes to do this consistently um, well, if I was going back to the very beginning, I would not say that I had a good mindset as far as not getting hung up on things and letting that cripple my level of activity. Uh, but once I started talking to JP, um, he kind of, you know, grounded in my brain to don't get so emotionally attached to them when they say no uh, and to move on to the next one eventually going to reach the next person that's going to appreciate the advice that you're giving them and value um, what you're trying to teach them about or educate them about their insurance policies. So, um, you know, just not being in the mindset of being so emotionally attached and disturbed by the no uh, helps get you closer to a yes. So, um, you know, that kind of helps me to keep plugging forward and I also get into a good rhythm with my activity um, that if I'm not on the phone, I don't feel productive. So um, I just try to keep uh, a good rhythm with my activity and a good mindset that it's eventually going to get me to a yes. I mean, the level of consistency is pretty unreal. So I'm going to do something right now that I typically don't do. Sometimes people ask me for Beth's numbers and I've stopped giving them out because honestly, 
there's one agent in particular, every two or three months, he'd ask me for best numbers. So like my team were having a hard time, you know, believing 80 plus calls a day is possible. That's 10 calls an hour, 10 calls an hour and 80 to 90% of calls are voicemails. So really 20 to 30 calls an hour is more realistic. Honestly, I stopped sending them. I'm like, listen, man, you just need to replace your team. If they're having to look somewhere else to prove it, but you know what? I want to prove it today because I think it's matters. You know, so many people out there online, you know, are talking about, you know, these challenges and this and that you create your results. You create, you, if you're in a tough market, do you think if you'll quote more, it's your right more? Yes. Even if you're in a competitive, competitive versus relative, but a competitive market, if you do more, you'll write more. But I just want to show, can I show this? Okay, let's just show it. So I'm going to share my Google Chrome first. And I, I just want you all to see this, and then we're going to get to your questions and all that kind of stuff, volunteers to role play. So I'm going to share my Google Chrome browser. Y'all can see that, right? Okay, good. So this is our, our Lightspeed uh, report, and she had no clue that I was going to bring this up, but this is January uh, first through the end of the month. I just chose for current month. And uh, real quick, Beth is at 110 items, trending 151. She has four life insurance applications, and that kind of takes me into these numbers. Her outgoing calls every day, her outgoing calls, this is total for the month, total for the month. 2,114, so that's an average of 131 a day. And we can see, um, you know, complete, no answers. So see, she's getting, you know, you might say, oh, this list is not good. I don't like this list. 400 people didn't answer, or it was bad numbers. What do you do with that? Next, next, next. Don't complain about the list. But you might think that talk time was kind of low. Like, why is that talk time low? Check this out. Incoming calls. 918 return calls and incoming calls. So 918, that's an average around 57 return calls a day and or Q calls. Mm -hmm. So I would probably imagine that's about 20 or to 30 service calls that you're mm -hmm. taking, handling half of those, quick payments, endorsements, etc. If it's a can of worms, you pass it off. Right. But all those voicemails are leaving returning massively, massively. So the total calls, and I'm gonna show you her quotes in a second. Did you know that? I'm gonna pull up your quotes in a second. 3,000 calls, 16 days into the month. Don't tell me you can't make 50 or 60 calls a day, guys. It's all in your activity. It's all about the activity, right? So I wanna show that, but then I wanna show her quotes. I wanna show her level of quote volume. And everyone thanked Beth because she had no clue I was going to be doing this today. And now I'm starting to feel like, is this TMI? I think we're good. Okay, we're good. All right, so let me share my, how do I just share parallels? I'm going to share my parallels. All right, so this is my windows. And this is um, the serious quote and close ratio report. Um, th this is a couple weeks. It's like nine days behind. But just know that. But look at these. You know, this week. 96 unique quotes. This week, 101 unique quotes. December, she was out a couple days here and there, but even 58, 46. You know, back into November, 97 quotes. So we're looking at probably an average of 75. You know, if you look at this watermark here, about 75 individual quotes a week, right? So if you're only quoting two, two quotes a day, you're only doing 10 or 15 quotes a week, of course you're not gonna put up you know, 150 items in a month. But I want to look at this. Look at her close rate. Her close rate is 22% this week, 14% that week. But you were also quoting more. But look at this. It jumps the next week. Why? To 22%. Because I bet she was closing some of these deals that were teetered the week before. So notice how it kind of teeters. Close rate goes down while quotes go up, but then it teeters. It's been pretty consistent those three weeks, pretty consistent. Teeters down, out, you're out. So mm -hmm. that amounts Christmas week, right? But hell, heck, sorry, I said <laughs> heck. I said heck on live television. It's still Christmas week and she banged out 46 quotes, right? 46 quotes. But notice the close rate, roughly 20%. Mm -hmm. Roughly 20%. Um, why am I showing this to you guys? I'm going to stop sharing. Because she fails 80% of the time. 80% of the time, you're a failure. 
I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can feel really bad right now. 80% of the time, she's not closing the deal yet. What, what's your close rate overall? 100%. Say it louder. 100%. 100% is her real buy close Buy or rate. die. Right? You never stop following up. Never. But think about that. I just wanted to show you all these real numbers. If you're only quoting two or three households a week, that's why you're only writing zero or one. Mm -hmm. She's quoting three, four households a day, right. three, four, five households a day. Um, and, and it's still failing 80% of the time. So it's a volume play. It's an activity play. It's mm -hmm. a consistency play. Mm -hmm. Is this level of consistency pretty normal for you? It has been since 2015. Since 2015, five years, five years. I could go back, except we've only been using this phone system for like two and a half years, mm -hmm. but it's, it's consistency. So just talk for a moment while I catch my breath and drink my beautiful spark <laughs> a bit more about challenging everybody on this call that they can do more and they're able to do more, but it all starts with the activity. Um, I think what's most important is you have to, you know, other people around you can motivate you and they can set the expectations, but you kind of have to set the expectations for yourself and you have to want more. You have to want to do it. You have to want to come in and go through your routine and, and be able to call your leads and be able to, you know, be willing to close business, be willing to overcome objections, be willing to have those serious conversations and mean it because if they, if they don't trust you and like you and believe what you're telling them, you're not going to close the business anyway, but you have to be willing to do the work to get to the prize. Uh, and I always tell people, I'm like, you can't have the prize unless you're willing to take the journey to get there. So say that again. you're not, if, how do I say that again? You're not you can't gonna... have the prize unless you're willing to take the journey to get there. Um, so I, I think that that's really, really important. And a lot of people just want the easy free falling fruit and they don't want to work for the hard deals. Uh, and that's where really the satisfaction comes in when you're working really hard and you're quoting a lot of people and you're taking care of families is, is the hard work that comes behind it. So that kind of makes you, makes you appreciate it a little bit more, uh, in regards to winning the deals. So you push and drive yourself. You're not relying on someone else to push and drive you. Why, why, you know, what do you work for? What is it that you're working for, for yourself, for your family? Well, I mean, that, that is what I'm working hard for. I feel like you always, when you, especially when you get to a slump, you have to ask yourself, what is my why? Why am I doing this? Why am I getting discouraged? Why do I want to work hard? You have to have a reason um, to motivate you to do more and to not give up. And that is my family. I want to take care of my family, my husband, my kids. I want to create a life for us that's enjoyable. Um, and, you know, so that's, that's why. That's awesome. Well, I want to get to your specific questions, but I hope this was a neat exercise. Maybe we can do this from time to time. I don't want y'all to rely on it though, especially owners. If you're watching this, I don't want you to have to rely on, you know, let's measure up to Beth. Do you measure yourself up against anybody else? What do you try to beat? Myself. Uh, in fact, I, I hate competition, uh, mainly because <laughs> my journey from the very beginning of becoming an insurance agent until now has been much different than other people. Um, and, you know, that could go back to seven years ago when processes were much different, talk paths were much different, the way we presented um, our conversation to people was much different. So there's lots of things that's changed in that. And as far as, you know, my progression in developing new sources of leads and, um, you know, how I talk to people and how I overcome them, all those things have changed. So I don't compare myself to anybody because when I started, it's much different than now. Um, and my competition is myself. Self. Um, I want to get better than yesterday, the day before, the day before. So I always, um, you know, compare what I did yesterday to the day before so that I can improve that. I love it. Very, very good stuff. I want to get to some specific questions here. Um, so I'm going to scroll up. Actually, I'm going to work my way up and kind of go over some questions for Beth while we have her. I mean, every minute that she's in here, she's not on the phone. Are you freaking out? <laughs> like you're not on the phone. Are you like, what do I do with my hands? Like Ricky Bobby, what do I do with my hands? Let's, <laughs> she's like, I'm supposed to be on the phone closing deals, baby. So let's go through some questions here. Um, how long until a copy of this video will be on the platform? Robbie, um, I'll have it in the live training with Joseph course at the very, very, very bottom of the CWC on Man platform. That's where I host all these recordings in about two hours. Uh, yeah, probably about, probably about 4.30 central time. It takes a little while for them to encode. Um, Ditto Cheyenne's question. So Cheyenne, I am hope I'm pronouncing that right. Cheyenne says, please tell us what you're saying on voicemails to get so many callbacks, please. So I keep my voicemails very vague. I don't give them any reason as to why I'm calling. 
Um, I say, this is Beth calling you from the Wiggins Agency. Uh, if you can, just give me a call back when you get a free moment. This is my direct number. Um, and so that's literally all that I say. I don't want to give them a reason if I'm calling for a cross-sell review, if I'm calling to requote their business, if I'm calling to, you know, calling to win back, whatever. I don't want to give them the option to choose how important it is to return my call. So I never leave a reason. It's just name, agency where I'm calling from, and my direct phone number. And always, always, always give your direct phone number. Always. And always leave a message, right? Always leave a message. You're wasting your time if you're not leaving voicemails, keeping it generic. I'm calling about your policy. Give me a call back. You know, not saying things like we'd love to save you money. You know, let's let's take a look again. I know we used to have your business and you left us because we were not good. Can we try again, please? No, don't do that. This is this is who you are calling from the agency about your policy. There's a few things I want to discuss with you. Give me a call back. Direct number. I look forward to talking with you today. And this reminds me, I wanted to bring something up real quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the questions for a second. I'm gonna share my screen again and pull up Google Chrome. Um, while, since I have a good attentive audience, I wanna announce something today. I wanna announce something today, right now. Uh, we have a brand new training offering that I want y'all to start diving in. And her answer just reminded me. So here's our on-demand training platform that has 70 courses, over 900 training videos, and over 200 hours of training. But check this out. Here in the team member start here section, there's two new courses. Owners team members, excuse me, team meetings done for you. And then staff team meetings done for you. So for you owners and managers out there, just real quick, we have several chapters where Craig and I are teaching you how to leverage these, these new team meetings. So it's like how to leverage them, how to do role play, et cetera. And then we have team meetings, establishing value on price. But then we have a short video for the coach, for the owner manager on how to lead this meeting. Uh, service is sales, sales is service cold calling and voicemails while telemarketing. So her answer just reminded me, all of our members that are on the call have access to this course and I'll show you where it is in the staff one. It's a 19 minute team meeting on how to cold call, leave voicemails while telemarketing. Uh, we also have how to work winbacks, uh, how to work internet leads. I have five others in post-production that I'm editing this weekend and our goal is to have 52 done in the next two months. We wanna have a team meeting for every week. So I'm just gonna go back to courses real quick to show the staff on the call for CWC members team meetings done for you for staff. It's just the team meetings. We don't have the instructions for the owner, manager, you know, the coach, the coach. And I just uploaded these a couple days ago. So right here, cold calling and voicemails while telemarketing, 19 minute meeting. Just to recap a, a little bit more before I get back to questions. I'm going to mute everybody. Whatever you're eating sounds delicious, but I'm going to mute everybody and get it back to me. The way we recorded these team meetings done for you is it's Craig and I teaching and then opening up discussion. So then we pause for general discussion. There's a worksheet that you can use for general discussion. Then Craig and I come back and we teach a specific script and we're gonna have so many things. Again, we're, we're shooting for 52 of these over the next couple months. And then we pause while you guys discuss and role play. And then we come back and end the team meetings. So they're literally team meetings done for you. If you're an owner or manager, you just hit play and pause and help facilitate the discussion and role play. Really, really cool. All right, let's get back to questions. Uh, let's see here. Uh, somebody asked about your sources. Um, I forgot. No, no. So Don asked. So where are all where are all of your leads from? Can you talk about the various sources you're working? Um, so we do have uh, live transfers, which is coming from Connected Leads and Quote Wizards. We have those. We do have uh, help from the service team. So those are service generated items. Um, and then we also, uh, you know, some of us are working directly with mortgage referral partners slash realtors. Um, and then we also have 50 thousand plus requotes, win backs and cross sales in our lead management system. So we have a multitude of sources that we work um, every single day. So, and you don't just do one, you diversify. Right. What's right. like your favorite outbound campaign? Uh, Winbacks are my favorite because it's outbound. the entire household <laughs> yep. that I'm getting. So um, Winbacks are always my favorite, but I do love requotes as well. Um, 
and the inbound stuff, somebody, so that's funny you asked that. Somebody asked, how do we work live transfer? And by the way, we don't buy a lot of leads right now and actually way less now because of the comp changes and the way it's mm -hmm. impacting us since we're so big. But we do still have connected leads coming in mm -hmm. and a couple of things. So a couple of people asked, how do we work live transfers? Uh, so we, I mean, we have a company that does the outbound calling to the lead to warm up the interest, um, and then they transfer them. I mean, they obviously give them the reason why they're calling them. They generate the interest on getting the quote started. Uh, they transfer the call to us. They do a small introduction, just basically giving name. Hey, I'm going to transfer you to Beth. She's going to gather a little bit more info to kind of complete the quotes and do the estimates for you, uh, and she'll take it from here. And from there, we just go into our uh, talk path as far as introducing ourselves, building rapport, getting through the quoting process, so on and so forth. But the, the live transfers have actu actually worked really well for us. And, you know, when it comes to any inbound source, whether it's a live transfer, a direct mail call, which, by the way, we have training mm -hmm. in the lead generation course for staff on how to work every type of lead from cold calls, internet leads, live transfers, direct mail, cross sales, recalls, win backs, referrals. I could go on. There's like 20 something chapters in the lead generation course where we teach y'all how to work all the various lead sources. It's all about being assumptive and assertive. Don't ask permission. And especially on inbound, you know, they haven't been really shopping, right? Someone else is generating that interest or they got a letter or something triggered them to call. Go right into it. Don't give them any reasons to second guess themselves. Go right into it. Be assumptive and assertive. Don't ask permission, right? Um, let's keep banging through some of these questions. And if y'all could, politely, just keep yourselves muted. Unless you want to ask something, go ahead and unmute and then start saying or just chat. Um, let's see here. Does your agency do a lot of community events to get leads, John? We don't, but I highly recommend that, um, especially for smaller, newer agencies. Some of y'all might have been on the call that we did on Wednesday um, with uh, Chris and Greg and Mark and me and Craig. I sent out the recording. It was sent to owners and managers. And gosh, they, and it's a 90-minute call. It's a 90 minute call um, on all kinds of things. And they talked about, you know, chamber events, going to car washes. That was a big one that Chris was doing, you know, and like paying for people's car wash to get a quote. So mm -hmm. I would encourage you all to check that out. Um, it's in our platform in the recorded webinars for owners course, but I also linked it on our website. And I emailed it out to owners, um, not to staff, since it has to do with marketing. Uh, let's see here. Chad says, I have one salesperson. What do you tell leads when everyone is busy and can't quote them right then? So you're making all these call, call, call. Someone answers and they say, hey, I'm busy. How do you handle that? Well, who's not busy? <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're all either working or running an errand or whatever. They picked up the phone because they have time to answer. Uh, and, and you obviously want to establish that it's very important, the conversation that you want to have with them. Um, so you could either, I mean, you have a couple options. You could either assumptively go into and start verifying the information to see if anything has changed so that you can at least get started on updating the quotes. Um, or you can get, get a commitment for a call time and day back. Uh, and again, reiterate the importance of the conversation that you do want to have with them so they can set time aside for that. Um, but you know, don't, don't worry about chasing them. You're still, you're still going to have to call until you get them on the, you know, get them on the phone to have a quality conversation anyway. So, I mean, you do have a couple of options on that, but don't let that hinder you from calling leads period because everyone is always busy. Jonathan asked, is Beth short or is Joseph tall? <laughs> I am only 5'1", guys. I'm very short and 110 pounds. I could do it like this. Actually, I can't <laughs> squat that long because I'm weak. I'm weak. I need to get back my, my squat game. All right, let's see here. Does it matter? So, SIN44S08, and by the way, y'all can change your name in Zoom, so it's not your computer name. Does it matter where I live if I want to be very successful at selling insurance? Am I limiting myself by living in the wrong location? You know, we don't live in a very big city. Huntsville, Alabama uh, is where we are. It's very spread out, right? It is a fast growing um, area and that's good, but it's not like Chicago or New York or whatever. I mean, we're talking Alabama here. Half the people are barefoot, right? <laughs> I mean, don't y'all all think that? All y'all <laughs> think that. Half the people walking around here barefoot, but you know, demographics can matter. You know, we have some members in towns with only 12,000 people. 
but 20 minutes away, there's a town of, or a city of 100,000, right? So I wouldn't say it matters. You know, I would say that you might have to, and in fact, it might even be a good thing if you're kind of in a small town, own it. Own that small town. Go to the country fairs. Go to the events. Be a part of the chamber and other networking things. Do stuff on social media and boost those posts just to own that market. So actually, in a smaller market, it might be easier to kind of own it because most people won't take that effort. Most other owners or staff will just kind of sit back and say, we're in a small town or, you know, things are just slow around here. Make it, make some noise, right? You do it and own that town. Um, let's see here. I feel the same sometimes. I hear you loud and clear. Okay, good. I'm just scrolling down. I went back up because I didn't want to miss any questions. Taylor says we are both gorgeous. Taylor, <laughs> you're my bestie now. Mm. You're my bestie. Um, let's see here. I have a question. All right, Evelyn asked, I have a question about procrastinators and also about how our customer service reps and receptionists can best handle it when people call in from mail outs. They always ask for the owner or his name or their name, uh, but the original SB and I are doing the sales. All right, so about procrastinators, I'm guessing she means prospects. I'll let you take that one. How do you deal with someone that kind of keeps putting you off? Oh, next week, next week, after the holidays. Anybody else heard that in the past month or two? How do you handle that? Um, so I, I obviously when you're having a conversation, you do want to set a sense of urgency behind what you're trying to put in place for them. Um, you know, for us, we just say, Hey, no, no more, no more worries. We're going to go ahead and get the coverage in place for you now. Uh, and that way you're protected before whatever event they're trying to put you off or whether it's after, you know, don't worry, we're going to get everything in place for you. We're to make sure you're properly protected. Um, you know, if you still get pushback on that, I would try to overcome the objection at least twice. Um, but if you can't push them out, to the time and day that you can get a future commitment from that person so that you can follow up and close the deal then. And I do have some of those too. I mean, I've had people put me off until after Christmas or after Thanksgiving or whatever. First week of January, I'm <clears throat> calling them to close the deal. Um, and that sort of builds you up for, you know, a good month if you've had some people that are trying to put you off for a few weeks. But um, you definitely want to set the sense of urgency behind it so that they know how important it is. Uh, Garrett, does Beth just quote in Alabama? Yes, we are appointed in Georgia too, mm -hmm. and that's rare, but I mean, 90% of your sales mm -hmm. are Alabama, right? Mm -hmm. We have some agents in Georgia that write Georgia business, and then Beth and our agents in Alabama write Alabama business. Very little crossover. It's nice to be able to do that, but you might, you might wonder, you know, where all of our sales are coming from. We're not, you're not working leads in Atlanta, mm -hmm. Georgia, or whatever. We're right here. We try to stay local. You know, we don't want to be too far out in terms of our marketing right. because you know what, you know what we like, we like some of y'all on this call, some of y'all, Hey, down in Birmingham and Auburn, Mobile, you mail the whole state. We love when you're, when those people bring those in here, <laughs> don't we love that. When they we bring do, in we do your letter, too. we do some in Tennessee as well, but not, yeah, we don't market not at marketing. All. No. Yeah, we don't market it off there. So we want to stay close, right? In terms of our marketing, and there's just something about you knowing the local community, saying, "Oh, I know that street. Oh, I love that neighborhood." You know, you you have a very good connection with the right. prospects you're working with. All right, we already answered that about voicemails. Uh, let's see here. I don't know what Chris is saying about that. When you say you never stop following up, do you still reach out to people who say, take me off my list? If people opt out, they opt out. If it's just no, and you can't follow up with them if they say, take me off your list. But if they just say, Beth, you know, I'm just really not interested. I'm really happy where I'm in now. And you can't overcome that. How do you still leave that door open? Um, I just say, well, you know, I'll reach out to you in a few months to see if anything has changed. Maybe we can revisit this conversation, but I'll, I always set a follow-up at least four to six months out so that I can at least reopen the conversation to see if they're interested then. Um, but I don't, I never quit calling a lead again, unless they say do, you know, they have the do not solicit thing. Or... So you just keep the door open. Right. You're nice. You're polite. Hey, now's not the right time. I understand that. I'd love to connect again. Is four to six months okay? They'll say okay, because who wants to say no to this the person? <laughs> Actually, do you get lots of no's? Mm -hmm. Tell me about no's. Tell me about rejection when I'm looking for the next question. How do you handle no, I'm just not interested or just mean or rude, short people? I think this kind of goes back to where you're not so emotionally attached to the no that you let it disturb your activity. I just try not to get caught up on that. Because um, even if they say no now, that doesn't mean six, 12, or 18 months from now, we won't have a conversation. They won't say, hey, thank you, Beth, so much for following up with me. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, you will have people that may not now, but they will 
later. Um, and that could just be that one conversation that totally changes their mindset. Um, wait, you just said something that made me trigger and now I forgot. Oh my gosh. I forgot what I was about to ask. So can you go over how many leads are required from the service team? A038166 asked. I'll take that one. So for our service team members, and by the way, we have amazing content on the platform, awesome service team training on how to do policy reviews, how to generate cross sales, how to handle upset customers, you know, talking about rate increases. I know none of y'all on this call ever have customers with rate increases. I know that only applies to us. We have <laughs> awesome training and all that. Okay. Um, but what we look for, from our service team is 10 to 20 items a month you know that's less than an item a day less than one item a day so we're looking for two to three opportunities a day mm -hmm. and do you like do you like that our service team generates yes. opportunities past you yes. talk about that um, you know if I was to break down the percentage of business that I write uh, 10 to 15 percent of that is from the service team um, it's a it's a well is I mean it's a very good source of business and we do depend on that uh, and I love working with the service team on generated items um, so that's a very good source of business for us teamwork teamwork and you know what for those of you on the call that do a lot of service you know meeting your customers needs that is service and I, I know I just showed the team meeting um, on services sales sales is service what I would challenge you all, you know, for those of you that do primarily service and maybe some sales, is to really consider what you do for your customers. What you do for your customers is not service with a smile. You know what? They can get that from the direct carriers. Mm -hmm. They can. They can get great service. I don't want to say names particularly. Well, no, I mean, they're never going to have people on our program. Like Geico, man, they are trained so good. They are trained so good. Craig actually had a claim last year. Was it last year um, with a Geico insured? I was I was with him when he was on the phone with their claims rep. Amazing. I'm not gonna lie. Amazing. They accepted offers quickly. It was his Ferrari, by the way. I hope he doesn't mind me saying that. But you know, the headlight was gonna be three grand or something like that. They didn't bat an eye. They handled him so good. So you know what? We can't just say that we're fast and friendly or we we care. What does that mean? What does that mean? We give good advice. That's what it means. That is good service. Good service is giving good advice and making recommendations and making sure that when something happens to our customer, we're there to protect them. How can we do that? If we allow them to have their car policy somewhere else or their property policy somewhere else, or we don't talk with them about an umbrella, or we don't even ask them about their life insurance plan right so for those of you that are doing more service I want to challenge you to try to generate opportunities in at least 25% of your calls one out of every four calls there's definitely opportunities in almost everyone but sometimes people are definitely being short and rude fine they're upset about something fine but most of our calls are very transactional hey I need to replace a car add a car when's my insurance payment due send me my ID cards etc step up a bit and we have amazing training in the platform to teach you how. All right, but raise your level. You know, you're not just there to give service with a smile. You're there to protect your customers. All right. Um, James, do your agencies use the main phone number for text messages? Don't want to get our agency number blocked for possible spam. Well, we actually don't text James. I would definitely recommend a def different phone number for texting and if especially if you're with Allstate to only use hearsay if you're with another company like Farmer State Farm hey everybody we are equal opportunity trainers you can do whatever you want but if you're with Allstate you have to use hearsay I would definitely recommend a different number because what if you do get flagged for spam that would be awful Chris I look forward to meeting y'all in Orlando next month the convention are you coming mm -hmm. are you sure mm -hmm. did you book your flights yeah. all right <laughs> Beth is coming Beth is coming, Craig and I, um, oh my gosh, I don't want to forget. We have Brooke Brollo coming, Aaron Augustine, uh, Chris Draper, uh, Hannah Cliver, uh, Judd Lavender, Hall of Fame EFS. So we have three amazing mega agency owners, a Hall of Fame EFS, and a young lady who runs one of the most high performing ECP agencies in the country coming to Orlando in February. We only have like 30 spots left. So Chris, look forward to seeing you there, dude. Do you have an assistant, Michelle wants to know, who keeps calls on hold for you until you can take it? So I guess like an inbound call, how do you handle inbound calls? 
Um, as far as like if someone's she's asking if you have an assistant who will hold the call. So like maybe you're on the phone and someone returns your call. How's that handled? But if they return your call, they go to your voicemail. Yeah, if I'm not right? if I'm not available, whoever answers because it could it rolls into it the entire roll, yeah. service team. Okay, so whoever's answering the phone will obviously either try to assist them if it's not new business, meaning in the last thirty days, or um, if I'm you know about to quickly get off the call, they'll hold them on the line and wait or transfer them to voicemail. So there's a couple of different options on that. Uh, now I do have an assistant that I've had for a, well actually two years now um, I did not have an assistant when I was writing less than 75 items a month so you know obviously if you're writing less than 75 items a month you do have a lot more time to process um, you know, UM retrievals, welcome onboarding calls, mortgagee changes and things like that. But my assistant helps me with more than just that. Um, she does do a lot of the service work with servicing my policy. She helps with you know, to, uh, basic questions as long as they aren't coverage and premium related. Um, she helps with postcards and uh, thank you notes and uh, the welcome onboarding calls, you know, uh, getting forms that we need back, all kinds of things. So she helps free up a lot of my time so that I can stay focused on outbound activity. Um, so anything that's you know, administrative related, she does handle that for me. But notice what she said. She didn't start using one until two years ago. When did you start writing 100 items a month? 2015. Five years ago. Mm -hmm. I, even though I went to Alabama, roll tide, you see my coach? <laughs> he can do a coach? little bit of math. I can't point him out. There he is. I can do a little, I can do that math. So five years ago, you started writing about 100 items mm -hmm. a month pretty darn consistently, but only so. So don't y'all go tell your owner, say, hey, owner, Beth was just saying, I need an assistant. Don't you dare do that <laughs> unless you're writing a lot of business, okay? She earned the right to have somebody help her with trailing documents and things like that. Um, and others on our team can use an assistant as well once they've written 75, two months in a row, or 100 in a month. Mm -hmm. And as long as they kind of maintain those levels, if they drip down to 30 or 40 items, we're not paying somebody else to help them do the follow up work. Um, all right, Chris asked an interesting question Are you finding fewer and fewer are taking calls, therefore, you haven't had larger call numbers? I mean, less and less people are answering phones, right? Yes. Would you say? But you also get lots of callbacks. Mm -hmm. But I mean, seriously, it's just this day and age. I mean, I'm holding up my iPhone, right? It's this day and age. There's now a setting in iPhone where you can basically ignore any call. And I know Android's had this for years. For, for all you Android snobs, don't tell me Android's had that for years. I know. But now on iPhones, you can go into your call settings and literally send any unknown call to voicemail. And so-and-so just asked about voicemail. She said, my agent doesn't want us to leave voicemails. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time to not leave voicemails. So always leave a voicemail. But yeah, there's settings now where people can basically ignore your calls, send them straight to voicemail. That's why you have to leave voicemails and do other things. What can we do? Handwritten Emails cards? Emails and email? handwritten notes. Yeah. Talk about um, that for a minute. I mean, so, I mean, as I'm calling somebody and I'm looking through the history and I see that I might have left four or five, six messages and I've, you know, either not gotten a call back from them or no replies, I will send a handwritten postcard just reaching out to them um, and asking them to give me a call back at the office. So, and, and we do mail that out and it is handwritten, but yeah, I mean, I'll trickle those throughout the day. Um, you know, every 10 to 12 calls, I will write a handwritten postcard if I hadn't gotten a hold of somebody. Uh, and that could be for a quartered household, somebody that you're trying to quote, it could be an umbrella. I mean, it could be anything that you're trying to uh, follow up on, but I, I do that for quite a, quite a few of my leads. And Lori asked that question 20 minutes ago. Do you send cards? Do you feel like that that helps drive callbacks? Oh, absolutely. I, everything is handwritten from the envelope to the insert card. Like everything is handwritten. More people are um, more willing to open those than they would something that looks um, advertising or, you know, salesy. So. Um. All right. I'm back down to where I was before I went to the top to go through questions. Um, how do you, Anthony wants to know, this is a great question. Anthony wants to know, how do you politely transfer a service call that you should not be handling over to the service team so that you can focus on sales? Um, so, well, I mean, this, this could uh, work a couple of different ways. Is that If I'm working a new business lead and I'm closing the business, I do try to transfer the influence as I'm closing out the sale that I do have an assistant or our amazing service team uh, that will be there to take care of them if I'm ever not available. But if somebody is just adamant about talking to me, obviously I'll get on the phone with them, you know, congratulate them on whatever 
changes we're getting ready to make. Uh, and then I'll say, hey, I've got Angela or Tara on the other line. They are ready to help you. They are the new car specialist or they do all of our mortgagee changes for our home policies, whatever. I will transfer the influence and obviously want to make them feel comfortable and confident that I'm putting them in good hands. Uh, and then I transfer that call to that service person so that they can handle that responsibility. Um, but you, tr you try to do that, especially for new business, as you're closing out the sale, you want to transfer the influence to the service team then. Yeah. And we're specialized, by the way, some of you might not be, you know, and if you're doing both, right, you say, Joseph, I have to do both. She takes around 30 mm -hmm. service calls a day, yeah. handles probably half of them, yeah. probably 15 to 20 or so, mm -hmm. then passes the other 15 to 20. Um, so I, you can argue that Beth is hybrid. She's handling 15, 20 service transactions and making over 100 outbound calls. I, mean, I got the numbers right here. Y'all see that? Oh, it's in reverse. It ain't on mirror mode. <laughs> it's not on mirror mode. You can't read that chicken scratch. Whatever. I'm breaking stuff. It's the caffeine. You could argue that she's hybrid. So what I would say is if you have the opportunity to do both, you are so lucky. You are so lucky. She's having to make 100, how many average? 131 average outbound calls a day trying to talk to six to eight people. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you get return calls. Mm -hmm. You are so lucky that people are calling you. So if you're blessed and fortunate enough to be doing service and sales, that's awesome. Make the most of those opportunities. And would you say that you do get a fair amount of business from those inbound calls? Yeah. I mean, in so fact, I love, I love those opportunities because you can look for things just like the service team would on things that they don't have. And you can bring that up and give them good advice and good recommendations and generate the opportunity from there. And you're, you're already building reports of going throughout the process. It's easier for you to do it from start to finish rather than transferring it to somebody else. So. Uh, Bill asked, do you do all of your own quoting while on the phone with somebody or is there a staff member banging out the quotes and then transfers to you? No, um, I put the quotes together. Now, if it's in real time, I'm going through the quoting process with them on the phone. Now, if I'm just gathering data to call them back later and sort of review everything with them, but I, I still do the quotes from start to finish. I still do the binding from start to finish. I gather all the information whether it be mortgagee, payment, loan numbers, VIN numbers, driver's license numbers, I take it from the you know, start to finish on the entire sale. Um, I don't have anybody else doing that in the background. I mean, think about how hard she's working to talk to people. All these calls, all these messages. You think she's gonna let them off the phone that quick? But hey, thanks for taking time. Let me just jot down your info and then I'll call you back in an hour. Yeah, we definitely oh don't gosh. have, we definitely don't have, um, quoting hours or calling hours it, it's more so do it as you're going along going. Mm -hmm. um and like he was saying you know if you are doing it in real time and you are quite you don't want to let them off the phone because you're losing the opportunity even more so to close it then um i don't know why y'all keep unmuting yourselves but that's okay how do you get over <laughs> well, no no janine asked a good question how do you present the quotes to a prospect once you've quoted them janine asked well, are I you mean, talking, talking about it more? Are you emailing it to them before asking for the sale? How do you present the quotes? I mean, initially I'm going to try to close it as after I've already reviewed the policies with them. What we, we more so reference it as policies and not quotes. Yep. Um, so obviously I'm going to try to close the deal after I've initially quoted at that point, if they give me objections and actually want to physically see the quotes, then at that point we will email the quotes. But again, we've had a full blown conversation with them and we've went through line by line what we're recommending they have to protect their household. So um, yeah, initially we're trying to close it in the same call, but if it requires for them to see, feel and touch the quote, then at that point we'll email it. I, I lost my place in questions. Okay, here we go. Jordan asked, how do you get over price? I've had a lot of trouble recently with prices being sky high and not being able to make the sale. Now, keep in mind, we have some non-members in here. I don't know if Jordan's a member or not. How do we position our quotes? Are we talking more about price or something else? Well, to be honest with you, for, you know, from my point as an insurance agent, I'm not thinking about the price. I'm thinking about the coverage and I'm thinking about what much, you know, what much better of a position I'm going to put their family in. Now, as a consumer, they're thinking about that because they have to worry about budget and savings and so on and so forth. But that's not the value you want to present to them. You want to make them feel like you are putting them in a much better position. You care about them. You're providing them more coverage uh, and you're protecting them from risk uh, that they otherwise would not be protected by if they had stayed with somebody else. So, um, 
your mindset needs to be no price at all. You don't even need to see the dollar signs and don't shop from your wallet because you don't know how much they have. You don't know what's in their wallet or in their budget. So don't shop from your own. Um, always just be focused on providing the best coverage, making sure they feel like you care about them and you're putting them in a much better position. All right. Uh, somebody just asked a question. So give me one second here. I'm going to share my screen. Somebody asked about the webinar that we did uh, on Wednesday with some amazing agency owners um, on marketing and doing things outside the box. And it was so good. And I don't, I don't think it's, it's not, it's not a call that staff shouldn't see. So hold on a second. I just can't remember what I named the page because it's a long, hold on one second. Where's my pages? Here we go. I'm on the back end of our website real quick. Nobody hack us. Uh, da, 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 crud. What did I call it? Example live role play. Oh my gosh. It's a long, I should have made, okay. Um, nope. Outbound prospecting. Oh, smarter lead acquisitions. Duh. All right. So I'm going to text this to you here in just a second. And then I'm going to go back to your questions, but I would love for y'all to see this stuff. It's, it was really, really, really good. Here we go. Here's the link. I didn't link it to our main page because we do lots of things like this. So here it is. GregWayansCoaching.com slash marketing dash and dash leads dash webinar. How stupid was that? I should have named it something else. So Missy <laughs> or no, whoever asked that, I'm going to chat this to everybody now. This was a really great call that Craig and I led with some awesome agency owners. You can you know, watch the recording right here. It's 90 minutes. And like, there's my boy Greg. And then we got our awesome boy, Todd McLean was on here. And then we had uh, Chris and others. Yep. There we go. Uh, and Mark, look at Mark's hair. Look how handsome he is. <laughs> All right. So let me stop sharing. You back to your questions. We only got about 10 minutes or so left. Are you good? Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm going to owe her an arm and a leg. You know what she charges? <laughs> All right. Let's see here. What do you write on cards? All right. We already talked about that. Let's see here. Chris asked a question about brokering. You know, do you think it's tougher in Florida, you know, because we're having to broker so much to do a hundred items. I would say, Chris, it is more challenging and time consuming to do quotes through multiple carriers. We're fortunate to not to have right. that challenge. But if you got 15 carriers and lots of options, we have one, really two, if we if we have to broker, we have three you know, you got options, man. So that's actually a good thing. And I do know of LSPs in Florida that have busted a hundred. Um, um, Ed Pickett's rock star. Oh my gosh, this is going to drive me crazy now. I uh, forget his name, but Ed Pickett's got a rock star down there. Um, he is so nice. And now I feel terrible for getting his name off the top of my head, but it's definitely possible. Listen, what you believe in your mind is true. You think 50 items a month right now is too high. Anybody on the call thinking that you're right. You think 131 average outbound calls a day is too much? Correct. You think doing 75 to 100 quotes in a week is too much? It's impossible? Correct. You're right. You set these limits on yourself. Break through that. Break through these internal limitations. Um, let's see. We only have about 10 more minutes or less. I think this has been my favorite webinar so far. I feel like I'm getting a lot out of this one, says Danielle. Does that make you feel good? Yeah. Isn't that good to help people? Uh, let's see here. After sending an e-proposal, uh, Myra asked for sending quotes. They noticed they never viewed it. Well, do, so they said, the right. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm all, you want the real answer? We don't send quotes yeah. a lot, nor do we use e-proposal. We have mm -hmm. one of the lowest e-proposal rates in the country. Mm -hmm. In the country, <laughs> we don't send quotes. We sell, right? Now, I do like that if we've talked to somebody, like she just doesn't use it because she's so old. Look how old she is. She's been here for seven years. She's ancient. Look how old she, I'm just kidding. But you were used to different things. Mm -hmm. Any proposals new and, di and different. We just mm -hmm. don't really use it. Yeah. So I prefer we just close deals. I do like though that you can see if they opened it or not. So, you know, Myra asked, you know, what do you do? Do you send a call me card? Do you call them again? Do you email Myra? Stay on them. Stay on them. I mean, we, we enter our leads into our lead management system. We have campaigns set up within the leads Good management question. system for each lead. Okay. So we have campaigns that go as far as three months, four months, five months, six months, sometimes nine months into the years. And those 
not only is the campaign set up for that long, but we have emails and phone calls that are trickled in there to stay on top of the lead. And that, you know, that comes from working your dashboard. So the, the follow-ups in between, even after sending the quote, even if they haven't viewed it, those touches in between follow, you're, they're obviously going to view it at some point if you're continuing to follow up with them. So, you know, that, that's important. The follow, if you're not closing the deal on the first call, the follow-up is the next best thing to look at because if your activity's there and you're not following, I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense if you're not following up after you've quoted the household. Don't just quote them and forget about them because they're not going to come to you. You have to go to them um, at that point. And something that I say all the time is persistence. Yes. What? Pays. Persistence pays. How many times do you close a deal that you quoted a year ago? You know, I, I, I have two leads. Well, actually, I have several, but I have two leads that really stood out to me in the past six months when we've talked about this. I have one that took 98 actions, and I have one that took 39. Now, the 39 was over a course of like two years, so that means there was tons of requote follow-ups in there over that period of time. So don't get discouraged if it takes you that long to close a deal. Those are the ones where you develop the best relationships because you can have those follow-up conversations about, you know, what they did six months ago or whatever. So um, there, there's tons of ways to... Um, close deals and it not just be on the first call. And you know what? Remember, remember how bad Beth is? Remember how she's such a failure 80% of the time? Do I need to pull up her quotes, close rate again? Even Beth's not closing 80% of the time, but you keep working them and keep mm -hmm. working them and keep working them over mm -hmm. and over and over as long as you still have consent and opt in. Uh, Raymond asked, how many customers does Beth write in her office each week? Um, I would say anywhere between one and five. I don't have a lot of walk, you know, walk-ins like face-to-face -face interactions. A ton of my business is done either through phone or email, yeah. and that's convenient for people because they have busy lives. Um, a lot of the times, the people that walk in your office are going to be elderly, and they love that face-to-face -face interaction, but I would say anywhere between one and five. Um, and some, some they're not walking in. Like, you, they might Or ask for an appointment, yeah, or, yeah. you know, for close to business. Yeah, and I like in-office closes, right? And she talks about when we mm -hmm. did training mm -hmm. seven years ago when she got started. How do we do that? Like, a, yeah. JP would say, get them on the fence and get them in the office and watch me in. close them. And I would literally sit in the corner on the bookshelf. He would come into my office and I would watch him overcome every single objection. And he said, they're not walking out of here today without policies. And every single time I would absorb everything he said and I would become a sponge and just be on repeat um, as far as how he said things and how he explained things and the, you know, the objections that he overcame. So I would literally watch him in person close deals. I like in person, but just to be honest, easily 90% of our items. We'll right. write around 500 items this month, something like that. I bet 50 are in person. The rest yeah. are on the phone, yeah. you know, in this day and age, especially, you know, with traffic and all this stuff, she closes on the phone. Mm -hmm. Now somebody asked a question, how often do you have one call closes? And it's not as often as you might think, nope. but Christy asked that. I would say less than 10% of the time. I'll be honest, um, a lot of mine does require follow-up. A lot of mine does require a campaign working it over and over and over again. Um, so I would say 10% or less. We only have about seven more minutes. I'm gonna try to bang through these. And I know this is a different format than what we typically do. Typically, we're doing lots of role playing and all that kind of stuff with you guys. But while I had her here, and these questions just won't stop, in fact, we won't be able to get to them all. So let's go ahead and stop more questions because I just don't want to feel bad about missing even more. But I hope this has been very beneficial. We're not done yet. We have a few more minutes. Johnny asked, how often do sales team members work out in the field, like visiting apartment complexes, dealerships, mortgage brokers, real estate agents? Not a lot. Not a lot. You know, we just, we don't at this time. Now, again, if you're smaller or newer or in that local community and trying to get out, to follow that stuff in that webinar that I linked to so many great ideas, but how often do you even leave your desk? Mm -hmm. Like how often? Yeah, never. Like do you even take lunch sometimes? I mean, maybe to eat a bite of food. <laughs> but, that's, but even that's rare. By the way, I'm not telling y'all to do that, but we have workshops here at our agency and we, and our conference rooms in the middle of the building, glass walls, Beth's office is outside the conference room. We bring her in at like 12 ish. She comes out of her office for the first time, typically, mm -hmm. and, and we tell people that was her office. She does an amazing 30 to 45 minute conversation with our workshop participants. We have sales workshops, service workshops, coaching workshops. You know what she does? And they joked on Monday. They joked on Monday because she was in there for almost an hour for the coaching and leadership workshop. You know, she went right back into her office. 
at like one o'clock, no lunch. And by the way, I'm not telling y'all to do this. I'm just saying you feel that being plugged in is important, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yep. Take breaks. Okay. I'm not telling y'all to skip lunch. Okay. Uh, let's see here. John Entrada says, uh, hey guys, off topic, I love the vision of leading with liability and love that I have this new opportunity to help folks protect themselves against unforeseen catastrophes. I'm finishing up the training, get licensed, and I'm going to wrap my head around all this at what a hundred item month looks like on a commission check, trying to pump myself up and work towards that goal. John, welcome to the industry, dude. I love your passion and enthusiasm. I don't know what your comp plan is, but I can guarantee if you're right in that amount of business, you're going to look really good. You know, Beth has had amazing success here and earns every penny of her paycheck. Um, and man, I'm excited for you. Just seize your opportunity. Get better every day. Start, maybe you start off writing 30 policies a month, 20 to 30 policies or items a month, 40 the next month, then 50, then 60. Even if you never hit 100, the Century Club is what we call it. The journey will be so rewarding, and you're going to help so many families, man. So welcome to the industry, dude. Glad to have you. Uh, let's see here. Oh, da, da, da. I have a coworker, Anthony wants to know, who does service and sales hybrid. Most of the time she's swimming in emails. How do you handle emails? You know, listen, I know a thing or two about emails because I've managed the agency's emails for eight years. And now we actually have one dedicated team member to do them all. Basically, she handles almost all agency emails. Um, you know, it's part of the deal. It's, it's, it's where we are in this day and age. What I would say is don't get stuck in going back and forth and back and forth in an email exchange with somebody. Pick up the phone. If they're asking you a detailed question or have detailed needs, pick up the phone call them say hey i got your request to do this or that or review your policies mm -hmm. don't spend god awful amount of times writing long emails that people won't read that is the biggest waste of time so what i would say is anthony pick up the phone pick up the phone and call those people handle those requests and see what you can generate from it see what you can generate from those conversations um let's see here Jennifer says, my agency owner, Greg, was on the call. That's right, Jennifer. We love Greg Blanchard, don't we? Don't we love Greg and everybody else on that call? Uh, real quick, hey, Beth, how many items do you have so far this month? So that person must have joined late. Beth is at 110 items so far, trending 151. So 16 days in the month, that's pretty darn good. Uh, she also has four life apps, four life apps so far this month. Why don't we talk about life for a minute? Um, so if I'm going all the way back to the very beginning, when I first started, I did not generate any life at all. Um, in fact, I was extremely intimidated by the conversation one, because I was afraid that I couldn't overcome the objections and two, I was afraid that I would totally ruin the PNC side of the deal. But then I thought, man, what have I been doing the past two? And this was, this was halfway into my career here at the Wiggins agency started really, uh, re-examining what I'd been doing for the past two and a half years that I had skipped over that part of the conversation. Uh, and the reason that I think that is because that's really what makes the true difference between you and the other insurance agent down the street is, are you going to have those hard conversations with them about protecting their family, not just the other guy in the other vehicle when you're talking about leading with liability. So, um, you know, I started challenging myself, um, you know, a, a way that I could ask that would be open ended uh, and get the person to start talking about what that situation was like for them instead of just a yes or a no. So we had a big team huddle about this and, and I sort of came, you know, it was a come to Jesus minute. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. So every phone call that I got on that day, I asked what your life insurance situation was like. And it couldn't just be, yes, I have it. No, I have it. No, I don't have it or whatever. You know, it got them to talk about whether it was a work, whether they had it through a third party carrier, what their retirement was, you know, or who, who was handling or coordinating those benefits. And once I generated the interest, I immediately got them over to our EFS. Uh, but that started working for me was asking an open ended question um, so that you could get them to start explaining their situation. And from that point, you can kind of fill out and get cues on how to overcome the objections if they do start giving those to you. But that was a big turning point for me on adding more value to what I can do for the clients that I work with. Hey, Raymond Roth, dude, I'm so freaking embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed, dude. Are you on? Are you on? Can you unmute yourself, Ray? Are you still on? Raymond from Ed Pickett's agency. He's Century Club winner. Joseph. Oh, dude, <laughs> dude, I'm so embarrassed. I was like, what's his name? He's, he's got the beard. He's got don't the beard. be embarrassed. 
Ray, what's up, dude? So you're how's it going? You broker. You've hit a hundred multiple times. Will you talk? Right. Broker, man, we don't have to deal with those challenges. Can you talk for a minute about you know your success? Just for a minute. I'm glad you're on. Oh man, I think uh, I think you guys are right that it's about focused every day with the game plan of coming in and um, making sure that the dials are up. You can't write a hundred items if you're not quoting more than a hundred quotes, right? So the, you got to be four or five hundred quotes, six hundred a month, and um, by bundling, really. I mean, we've had people uh, within the state of Florida come to our office, regional people, saying like, "What's up with these bundling rates? Because we think it's a mistake. I mean, how can you guys have?" this kind of rate and it's just not because the process brings the items out and uh who wouldn't bundle you know umbrellas and renters and and so forth but in terms of your question about advantage business i mean i think i don't know if you remember we went to your training a couple of years ago and i said my goal was a thousand items yep All and right. i hit that goal right i hit that goal so um last year it wasn't quite a thousand but i think out of 850 150 of those were broker gotcha. so it's do you let things slow you down? You know, for example, do you, do you leave it as an excuse, you know, to say, oh, you know, it's going to take too long. So I'm okay settling for only 40, 50 items because it takes so long to do all these things. Or do you just power through it and have that momentum and keep that momentum going? Yeah, you got to power through it. You got to power through it. I mean, as good as my agency owner is at the end of the day, I'm responsible for my production and my paycheck and really what can he do other than just give me the keys and the, and the support. And uh, if I don't do it for myself, I can't blame him. Right. I mean, it's my responsibility. So. That's right. Well, dude, I appreciate your time and you tell too. Him I said, hello. I will. All and right. I would say he's my brother from another mother because somebody <laughs> changed their last name. It was either, it was probably my family because my family's not so smart. So it's Pickett, <laughs> Ed Pickett, and I'm Puckett. It was probably somebody in my family like 400 years ago, just writing sloppily. So he's my brother from another mother. And I appreciate you, man, for sharing. And congratulations. Congratulations. Over a thousand items two years ago, over 850 items last year while brokering you know you can do it so I think we got to most of the questions I want to thank Beth for sharing her time with us she had no clue I was gonna bring her in here did you no. right she had no clue I was gonna show her quote numbers her close ratio her call logs how would y'all feel if I was like hey Richard I'm just kidding what's up Richard <laughs> hey Richard pull up your call logs for me brother would y'all's heart start being like oh snap but you know what she does her deal every day and that's why she's so successful and i hope that y'all learned a lot today about persistency calling how to leave voicemail stay on top of people mindset what to say to different transfers and things working as a team gosh powering through i mean we went through a lot in the past hour and i know it's a little different than what we've been doing in terms of the live role playing but i wanted to capitalize on her time everyone is saying thank you greg says cwc's the best thank you beth <laughs> Thank you, Beth. Chicago Thank you guys here. for having me. Yes. Well, we appreciate you all so much. I appreciate Beth. And I got to get her back on the phone, man. Every minute she's not on the phone, you're not helping somebody, right? Right. So let's get her back on the phone. I'm going to wish you all a great weekend. But no matter where you are, whether you're on the East Coast or the West Coast, you still have time today to close a deal or two. Get on that phone. Pick up the phone. Close somebody out before you go home. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you all so much.